guys, welcome to another essential tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create this kind of snow deformation scene using 3ds Max and Typhlo. I found this method to be pretty quick compared to other ones I've tried. So I just wanted to share a bit of that workflow today. So to get started, let's create our first Typhlo object. And we're going to create a birth operator first. I'm going to set my start and end point to zero. And then under the display operator, let's set it to ticks, which will help us just see it in the scene easier. Another thing we're going to need is a position ray cast. And then we're going to add in all of the objects that we want our snow to land on within our target objects list. After that, let's just create a new icon. So jumping over to where it created that new icon, you can see that particles are shooting down by default in this case in the Z axis. And wherever the particles intersect with an object, they automatically stop which is great. This kind of mimics the effect of snow. So let's move it into the center of the scene. And we're going to set the length and the width to something like 800 by 800. Now going back to the tie flow, let's crank up the total amount of particles to something like 300,000. And this is going to help you see the effect in your scene a lot better. So now that the particles are covering the topmost part of the surfaces, let's give them a mesh. So if we use something called tie mesher, we can create a blob mesh on each of the particles that were created in our scene. What you want to do is select the tie flow as the input object. And I'm going to adjust the absolute value to something like five and our voxel size, I'm going to shrink it down to something like two. This will help add a lot more detail into those snow track deformations. Let's extract the mesh. And then I'm going to clean up my scene a little bit. I just want to rename our tie flow to something unique like snow cover, and let's rename that extracted mesh as well so that we can find it easier later on. Great, so let's convert it to edible poly. And I'm going to add a tie relax modifier so that we can smooth out some of those artifacts. I'm also going to add in a V-Ray material and just make it white so we can make our snow look a little more like snow. So moving on, let's create another tie flow object. This is going to be the main tie flow simulation that deforms our particles. We're going to create a birth operator. And before we can continue, we actually need to know exactly how many vertices exist on our extracted snow mesh. So if you tap seven and you hit alt Q to isolate that mesh, you can see in the upper left hand corner, we have exactly 1,259,876. So you want to copy that and paste it into the total of the particles being generated because when we go and add a position object operator and then set the location to vertices in order it's going to perfectly align each one of those particles we just generated to each of the vertices on the extracted snow object and there you go you can see as i zoom in closer here we now have one particle occurring for each vertice Next, let's add a collision operator. And one of the few things I want to change is the scale radius, which impacts the collider shape. And the particle interaction, I want to change to continue. This is important because if we don't change it, the particles are going to bounce and they're going to shoot off into space. And lastly, under the physics settings on that tie flow setup, let's disable gravity and the ground collider. Next, let's add in our collision objects. I already went ahead and added in those wheels as part of a selection set. So if I hit Alt Q and isolate them, you can see exactly what objects I'm going to be using as colliders. If I jump back into tie flow now, um, select those wheels and hit add selected, they're now part of our sim. So for the next step, when the particles actually collide, we need them to do something. So I'm going to send them to another event. And that next event is going to have a push in slash out operator. And what that ultimately means is that when the particles are hit, they're going to push into our snow mesh, something like four centimeters, they're going to push down four centimeters. That's going to give the impression of a snow deformation effect. Later on, you're going to see that I'm going to use a copy of that object. And I'm going to skin that object to the particles so that they follow along um, that tie flow simulation. I'm just changing the display to ticks here and I'm also just adding in some mesh operators as well um, because we're going to need that for exporting. And now you can see as I scrub through the scene, 
that the particles are indeed colliding with the wheels and pushing down into our scene four centimeters. So that's looking pretty good. But you can't render this as is right now because all we're seeing is those particles being deformed or offset in their position as they collide. So what we're going to do, though, is we're going to use this simulation to drive the deformation on a copy of the mesh. So let's do that. So let's copy this mesh and give it another name. And let's collapse it down to editable poly. And we're going to add in a modifier called tie particle skin. Now what this modifier does is it skins an object to a tie flow simulation. So because in our simulation, the particles perfectly align or match our object that we're skinning it to, it allows the mesh to perfectly follow the movement of those particles. So that's why the deformation matches the tires correctly and looks good. So zooming in here though, you can see there is a bit of roughness to the mesh. So we're going to use a tie relax modifier on top of this in order to kind of smooth out some of those deformations. You can create a lot more detail or fidelity by increasing the original density of the snow mesh. But just for the sake of this tutorial, I use something a little less dense. So I found this effect pretty fast to work with. Um, it's pretty good for sand, uh, mud, any kind of uh, mesh that you need to deform quickly. So for this tutorial, I used NVIDIA Omniverse Create. And the way I was able to export these animated meshes was I went to File, Export Selected, and I chose Alembic Sequence. Then I gave it a name, and I just made sure to set the animation parameters to the range and the data channels to UVW. And then I repeated the steps for each piece in my scene. So in this case, for the city object, it was also an Alembic mesh, but rather than using an animation range, I just set it to single. And lastly, for the cars, it was the same process. So I selected all of the car and wheel pieces. Then I went to File, Export, Export Selected. Once again, under Alembic. And because it's animated, I set it back to Range. Now jumping into NVIDIA Omniverse, I'm not going to show you exactly how I set it up, but the process is pretty quick, and I've shown it on other tutorials. All you're going to want to do is bring in those Alembic files, and just have them inserted as sublayers. That was it. I just added some simple materials. And for the cameras, I animated five different viewpoints and then snapped them all together using the sequencer. You can just drag those cameras into the sequencer and that just allows you to set the order in which you want your camera animations to play. So the beauty of NVIDIA Omniverse is that it's all real time and this is all real ray tracing. Super fast, it's free. Um, you know, I've recommended it a ton of times in other tutorials, so, you know, I'm doing the same this time. Definitely recommend checking it out. There's some other demos I also created. Um, this was another scene using the exact same process. All I used was just some rigid bodies um, of these, like, little balls that were rolling down this hill and just kind of gives you some cool snow deformation. I also did it on another video, um, just a silly one of these, you know, ragdoll simulation of these different skiers. And it was done in two pieces where I had the main part where the snow was deforming, just so I can have a ton more polygons. And the mountain behind that was a little less um, dense in the mesh. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.